why did the Knights Templar go to Ethiopia? With the Saracen threat starting to overwhelm their presence in the Holy Land, the Knights Templar knew they had to act to save Christendom in the Holy Land. First some background to this story, Saladin had become leader of Egypt in 1169 and had overrun Damascus in 1174 and Aleppo in 1183. He and his Saracen army had the entire southern and eastern flanks of the Crusader states in a vice-like grip. He was Sunni and managed to unite his subjects under Sunni Islam and convinced them that he would wage holy war to push the Crusaders, including the Templar, from Jerusalem. However, before he could act against the Christians, he had to clean up the Arab lands under his control, so he made a truce with the Crusaders in 1185. But the truce was fragile. These were two completely different groups who were diametrically opposed to one another in every single way. The peace could not and would not last. The concern for the Templars at this time was that they could see that the writing was on the wall. A force driven by religious fervor, much like themselves that outnumbered them, was intent on placing Jerusalem under Muslim control. In stark contrast the Crusaders slash Christians began to weaken. The Crusaders could not simultaneously support an army and garrison all of its castles slash outposts due to shortages in men. In addition, the king of Jerusalem, Baldwin IV, had leprosy which made him incapable of ruling effectively, he was blind and paralyzed in his early twenties and had to be tied onto a horse to go into battle. Then of course there was the political aspect, numerous senior members of court were all vying for position and power whilst degrading the will to overcome a superior force. The Templars needed a solution that could help them restore parity and enable them to drive the Saracens from the Holy Land and thereby restore Christendom. Let's go back a bit. The Knights Templar were created in 1120 and were initially based in a wing of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which was built on the Temple Mount, believed to be the location of the Temple of Solomon. They took their name from the Temple and even went as far as calling the Mosque Solomon's Temple. Said to be Phoenician in design. The Temple was a magnificent, white marble and gold-covered building, it contained three chambers, consisting of an outer vestibule, the main chamber, and the Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies was a small antechamber at the back of the temple where the Ark of the Covenant had been kept. Two twenty-seven-foot-high brass pillars adorned with ornately decorated capitals stood at the entrance to the temple. The pillars were known as Boaz and Jachin, and they stood either side of the door that led to the temple's vestibule. The temple was completely destroyed by the armies of King Nebuchadnezzar II in 587 BC. A second lesser temple was built in 516 BC, but it too was destroyed in 70 BC. The Temple Mount would become a rubbish dump for the next 600 years, and the history all but forgotten till 700 AD when the Al Aqsa Mosque was constructed on the site. After the establishment of the Knights Templar in 1120, they began to excavate the area. A team of modern Israeli archaeologists discovered what looked like an excavation tunnel that extended to almost directly under the Holy of Holies. The archaeologists immediately believed it had been the Templars who had occupied the area and were keenly attached to its history. But why? Dark Histories believes that their objective was simple. Find the Ark of the Covenant. We believe that they had heard the rumors that just before the temple's first destruction, the Ark had been removed from the antechamber and buried directly under the temple itself for safekeeping. The question is, did they find it? There have been lots of guesses as to what the Templars uncovered. From the Spear of Destiny to the Holy Grail, to the Ark itself, being as secretive as they were, no evidence to substantiate anything has been found. Also given their whole purpose for being in the Holy Land, there would have been celebration and fanfare had they uncovered the Ark or any artifact for that matter, yet nothing was spoken of. With the death of Baldwin IV, and the actions of Reynald of Chatillon, a Christian nobleman, who insisted on causing trouble with the Saracens, the peace was starting to fray. 
Needing to find a way to extend the future of Christendom, a group of Templars left Jerusalem as an escort for the future king of Ethiopia, Lalabella. He had spent the last 25 years in exile in Jerusalem and had established a good relationship with the Templar. Somehow, he had managed to convince them to assist him in his attempt to regain the throne from his half-brother. But why had they agreed? This would have been a massive undertaking to a land they knew nothing about, through some incredibly hostile territories. They most probably would have gone via the Red Sea, but this would still have been an extremely long and difficult trip. Something motivated them to do this, something big. Dark Histories believes that, during his interactions with them, it was Lalabella who had told the Templars of the Ark's existence in Oxum, Ethiopia. Given the desperate circumstances facing their kingdom of heaven, the Templars had decided to support his claim to the throne and in so doing get themselves access to this holy relic. Its awesome power was well documented in the Bible, perhaps even being radioactive. And we believe that they intended on bringing it back to the Holy Land and using it to defeat the Saracens, in much the same way the walls of Jericho were bought down by the Ark. History tells us that this never happened and eventually, the Templars were destroyed and the purge started by the King of France in the late 1290s. But how do we know that the Templars even got to Ethiopia? Armenian geographer Abu Sali in his churches and monasteries of Egypt and some neighboring countries' writings noted that the Ark was accompanied by men who were white and red in complexion, with red hair this were clearly not Ethiopian locals. There is Templar iconography on the walls of the Lalabella churches and of course, then there are the churches themselves. Hewn out of the rock, these were far too advanced architecturally speaking for the locals to have done the job without help and of course some of the most impressive builders slash architects from history were the Templar. Once they had found the Ark, why didn't they bring it back to the Holy Land to or even Europe? There are of course numerous possibilities, their numbers were depleted substantially through battle and disease, the Ark was under such heavy guard it became impractical to approach it let alone leave with it, they simply decided to stay and support a Christian kingdom under massive Islamic pressure, they could also have considered that given the situation in the Holy Land it would have been better to leave it where it was, safe from prying hands. Here at Dark Histories, we have our own theory. After arriving in Oxum, the knights discovered that the Ark, so revered by the Ethiopians was in fact a fake, and therefore useless to them. Having felt betrayed they either left to return or simply amalgamated with the locals. Edward Yellendorf was the first outside person on record to ever inspect the Ark of the Covenant held in Oxum, this was in 1941 when stationed in Ethiopia as a British army officer. He claimed that the Ark was made of wood, empty and clearly a fake. Perhaps this is the same sight that greeted the Templars when they first encountered the holy relic. Thank you for watching. Please drop a like, subscribe for our next video, and leave a comment, we would love to discuss your ideas and theories.